looking back, you would never have had it any other way, would you, Priscilla? You, this was your career of choice always? Uh, no, it hadn't been. Um, as I said, really, I only studied uh, the Barristers Admission Board course just as a mental exercise for something to get me out of what I found really boring at home with two small children. Um, and it was only as I proceeded through it that I thought, oh, I am enjoying this. Yes, I, I think I'd like to give it a go. But it, it wasn't an early ambition of mine at all. I don't think you could deny your heredity, though, could you? <laughs> well, I mean, even my father told me, don't do it. Yes. <laughs> You mentioned earlier about um, how the numbers of women in law courses have swelled, and it's true, they have swelled to at least 50%. But at the bar in New South Wales, that numbers of women still comprise just under 20%, and it's the same here in Victoria. In many ways, women are still deterred from going to the bar. What to you, looking back, are the main barriers to entry? I wonder if it's any different from any of the uh, the professions. I mean, it, I know it's terribly hard for female doctors and a lot of them choose um, to, to be skin specialists because they're nine to five and you're not called out at night. I mean, if you've got a family, uh, really your family does have to come first. And uh, for a lot of women that means you can't just uh, work 24-7. Um, so... I'm not sure that it's ever going to change very much and I remember feeling so guilty when I spent so much time at work that I wasn't at home with the family and had terrible problems with getting babysitters coming after school and then someone had, uh, would swipe your babysitter and you had to find another one. It's very, very hard for women to, to work in a full-time profession and I can't see that it'll change very much in the future. So what advice would you give to women thinking of coming to the bar? Certainly give it a go, uh, give it a go, get all the help you can. Unfortunately, when you first come to the bar, you generally don't have the funds to employ what I did, a daily housekeeper cook, um, and so it's just a real struggle. But if, uh, if that's what you want to do, well, you struggle through. Uh, nowadays, when uh, women are getting married later and having their families later, uh, it probably would be a lot easier. I, you know, I got married at 21 and had f uh, family at 22 and 23. Now, that doesn't seem to happen these days. If I'd waited till I was 30, I would have perhaps... Uh, I well, probably never would have done the PAB course because I wouldn't have been so bored. I would have found perhaps some other profession. In fact, when I finished my arts degree, I thought that a librarian might be quite a nice profession and did for a while work in uh, one of the state libraries. What about advice that you would give to women who are at the bar? Oh, I doubt if they need my advice. I'm, I've been away from the bar for 21 years. I, I think that a new generation that has to deal with its own problems. Actually, I, I, I wouldn't mind just asking you, apart from Bob Sinjin, was there anyone else at the bar, senior counsel or the like, whose who's approach to the law you admired or...? Chester Porter, he was on my floor. Mainly I knew best, of course, the people on my floor. And uh, David Yeldum. David Yeldum was wonderfully helpful. Uh, unfortunately, uh, things went against him later, but uh, he was on the floor as well. Murray Wilcox uh, was, uh, was a huge mentor of mine. In fact, my first little chambers were the secretary's room adjacent to Murray Wilcox's chambers, uh, which was fitted out. I put bookshelves in and fitted it out as a small room. And uh, we actually shared a secretary, so, so Murray was a, a huge help to me. Priscilla Fleming, thank you very much. That has been terrific. Thank you, Juliet.